Hello everyone. So uh, this is our last week. Uh, in my first session in this week, uh, I'm going to uh, take you through 45 points uh, counseling uh, PDF. Uh, this will be very, very helpful for you to counsel mother uh, wherever you are. Uh, it is also important for you to go through this uh, PDF uh, many times because we have put in lot of small small points which really makes a lot of difference in the field you know uh, uh, this is basically in English we have it in multiple different languages uh, we will be loading this on uh, NBTEL website you can download it you can print it either on uh, you know uh, A3 chart uh, or A4 A3 definitely will have much better graphics uh, you know you'll be able to show mothers very uh, easily uh, so here I'm going to start uh, this PDF. So uh, 45 point comes in the routine. It's like if it becomes a routine, uh, mothers will not understand. I mean, mothers will not forget. So that that is important that you you use this as a routine uh, breastfeeding practice, uh, you know, on a day to day basis. It's just like we have a routine in the morning, right? First time, first thing we do is we get up then we do certain things, there are chores that we do, you know, and because we do that on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't forget any step. Similarly, in this 45 points, we have put uh, all this point in a, in a routine way if mothers understand what to do first, then uh, second, then third, then fourth, uh, she will not forget her, uh, you know, important aspects of uh, breastfeeding, okay? So here are my first point, which I like to teach mothers uh, about, uh, you know, whenever, we, whenever I ask her in the, uh, in the field, uh, when do you breastfeed the baby? And she always wait till baby cries, or she always wakes, uh, wake, uh, or wait till baby wakes up. You know, so uh, here I have uh, shown that there are some early hunger cues that she needs to know. And believe me, most of the mothers, uh, even healthcare workers or practitioners, they don't know this early hunger cues. So uh, here, this is what uh, I have shown that the first and the most important tip to recognize is the early hunger cues of the baby. If the mother recognizes the baby's early hunger cues, then she can breastfeed baby using the cross cradle hold easily. So here, this PDF I've created in cross cradle hold because. Uh, we have uh, seen really good results you know if she doesn't recognize the early hunger cues the baby will become restless and start crying because of hunger so what happens you know uh, when the baby is crying with hunger it is very difficult to attach this baby you know uh, extremely difficult it takes time to calm down the baby and then reattach so here uh, this uh, understanding of early hunger cues are very very important uh, and, you know, the point is to have a, a deep attachment as early as possible. Uh, this will also increase mother's anxiety. So if the baby's crying a lot, you know, she will not attempt and then she will uh, end up giving uh, top feeds. Okay. So early hunger cues include babies moving its uh, body. So baby will basically squirm, you know, this is squirming of the baby, you know, and then baby will uh, basically, uh, you know, kind of turn uh, his or her head side to side. So we'll try to look for breast, you know, we'll open the mouth also. And then basically they will start uh, salivating. Uh, they'll start putting hand in the mouth and then eventually it's crying. So when baby's crying, that's the very last stage of uh, you know uh, uh, hunger okay so you don't want to wait till the last uh, minute last uh, stage when baby's crying becomes too difficult so you explain to the mother what are early hunger cues again squirming of the baby you know uh, opening the mouth rooting reflex putting you know kind of uh, trying to look for breast uh, you know sideways opening the mouth uh, you know then putting uh, hands uh, or fingers in the mouth and then salivating and last is your more irritable state and then crying okay so this these are important points so once now uh, say for example in two hours uh, baby is not woken up 
and at least in first uh, three to four weeks, you know, uh, I don't wait for more than two hours really. Uh, so during daytime, if it is more than two hours, I like to wake up the baby, you know. Uh, just because in India we have a lot of catch-up growth to do, you know. Uh, if baby is uh, gaining weight, you know, good uh, 40 grams a day, then I'm not worried at all. But if baby is not gaining weight, I like to wake up the baby every uh, at least, you know, after two hours to two and a half hours of not feeding. Uh, at night time, I like to wake up the baby uh, at least after three hours of not feeding. Now, many times it happens that, uh, you know, some babies, they uh, feed a lot during evening time. Okay. And that is called your cluster feeding. So if, if baby is feeding very frequently, say every hour or so, uh, in uh, evening hours or certain hours, then baby may have a, a prolonged sleep. In those cases, I don't uh, bother baby to wake up, uh, you know, after three hours. Uh, so you, it, it all depends upon basically uh, what is baby's feeding pattern, okay? Uh, second is your mother's preparation. So mother's preparation is also very, very important. Uh, here we have shown that uh, mother need to wash her hands. And you know, another thing which is I think I really reiterate is to always explain the logic to the mother. So for any point that you're explaining, if you teach her the logic, she will not forget. Okay, so here the logic is basically, you no, know, she has to clean her hands with soap and water because that will prevent uh, infection. Okay, uh, many times what happens is, you know, mother is uh, busy doing other things, you know, uh, she may have visit to the toilet sometime, you know, she's so overworked that sometimes she forgets to wash her hands. So here if it becomes part of a routine that before feeding the baby, she has to wash her hands, you know, she will not forget. Okay, and also you want to kind of explain to mother that if, you know, uh, in case if she is not washing her hands, there's a risk of she developing infection and then the risk of she passing on the infection to the baby. Okay, so that's, that's the reason that we ask mothers to wash their hands. Uh, then she should basically drink uh, boiled and cool clean water. So here also I have explained uh, that uh, the reason mothers need to drink, uh, uh, you know, at least one glass of water as she ag again forgets to drink water, uh, you know, in, in, in her routine, she forgets to take care of herself. And if she is not well hydrated, you know, uh, she in fact produces almost, uh, you know, 750 to 850 ml of milk, as you saw in the tutorial. Uh, so we want to kind of make it a routine that every time she sits down, she drinks a glass of water. What I have seen in my, my project is many babies, they gain uh, almost 50, 40 to 50 grams a day. In fact, in some of the projects, uh, some of these babies are gaining 60 grams a day. So in those conditions, you know, mothers would be producing probably 1 to 1.5 liter of milk a day. So in those scenarios, and especially in India, when you have, you know, hot weathers, uh, even the humidity, uh, you know, uh, when it's very, very dry, uh, you know, mothers tend to kind of lose a lot of fluid. Okay, so just make it a routine and tell her that if she drinks water, she will be more relaxed, she will calm down, she will be hydrated, and it will be easy for her to breastfeed the baby. Okay, if she's dehydrated, you know, she will not uh, kind of, she will feel tired and she will, you know, kind of, many times skip uh, breastfeeding, uh, you know, uh, breastfeeding the baby. Okay, so here is a fourth point. In fourth point, what we have shown is basically she needs to sit comfortably on the floor on the bed or on a chair with her feet well supported. Many times what happens, you know, uh, many of these mothers, they sit on the chair uh, uh, on which their uh, legs are not supported on the ground. So I do recommend that we put some uh, stool or some, uh, you know, something which supports her leg. Uh, leg support is very, very important. My favorite uh, position to sit for mother is literally on the bed with uh, legs folded. Uh, becomes much easier, especially when she's latching. Uh, once she finished latching, then she can basically go in any position, you know. But while she's latching, that uh, sitting uh, with uh, folded legs really help, you know. So, uh, and one more thing which is important is the, that her, you know, she should sit straight, you know, because uh, obviously many mothers have this habit of uh, drooping down like this, or you know, they are just their back is not straight. They they bend down to breastfeed the baby, you know. Uh, and if this happens, you know, say 10, 10 to 12 times in 24 hours, it will really affect uh, mother's, uh, you know, uh, kind of back, you know. Uh, so I do recommend that mothers kind of uh, sit straight, uh, make sure that she has a back support. So if she's sitting on the bed, 
Uh, make sure that there is a pillow behind it. So you you arrange for the pillow. Uh, she should be comfortable. If she's comfortable, uh, latching would be easy. Okay. So mother's comfort comes first, really. She should keep her shoulder relaxed in a comfortable position. She should not uh, droop her shoulders. So this is what I just mentioned. Uh, mother should remove uh, both the blouse and the bra covering her breast because the pressure exerted by them can cause a lump in the breast. Now again, I have explained this earlier also in my live session is that you know uh, you want to make sure that uh, mother uh, kind of gets this uh, you know uh, kurta or whatever that cloth that she is wearing, even the nightgown. But she has to have a uh, you know button front open and it should basically open up till her uh, navel. Okay. Many times she has just two or three buttons and what she does is she opens those one or two buttons and then she basically pull it down uh, and then try to remove a breast so that edge is pressing on the lower uh, edge of breast. You know, uh, so you don't want to do that. Uh, many times what happens at mothers, they uh, sometimes they wear blouse uh, but they don't open all the buttons. So she may open just two buttons uh, from below and then she will pull it up and at the same time she has a tight bra uh, worn inside so she will pull that bra tight bra and the uh, blouse and then she will all that pressure will come on her breast now remember that breast has uh, you know your uh, milk alveoli where the milk uh, is being produced and then it has uh, you know uh, ducts right from where milk is kind of uh, transferring from milk duct to uh, mother's uh, nipple, right? So if there is a block which kind of has a lot of pressure on it, it will, uh, it will block the transfer of milk okay from alveoli to uh, to collecting duct or to nipple and in that case what will happen she will produce milk because uh, you know milk acina or milk uh, alveoli are fine but she will not be able to uh, drain that milk and then what eventually happens is then she will develop uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, swelling, and then she'll develop uh, mastitis uh, or infection. You know, breast abscess, and then eventually, once they have breast abscess, you know, they get uh, incision and drainage, and then there are a lot of complications. So, point of this Fortify uh, counseling, uh, you know, PDF is that basically we are working on prevention of all the complications, also prevention of complications of breast abscess, uh, prevention of complications of nipple sore. All those pro problems occur if you don't uh, guide mother. Exactly Exactly how to do what to do okay so that is important and the time that you tell mother to get this kind of gown uh, or uh, uh, you know uh, or other of those uh, kurtas in during ANC time because by the time she comes to PNC it's already too late so you guide her during ANC time that how she should buy clothes which are front open and you know much easier to breastfeed now sometime I do see that some mothers buy those lactation gown but the problem is they have this uh, chain which are just literally uh, one and a half inches uh, long and in those scenarios what happens that uh, you know only nipple comes out and only a little bit of areola comes out and that will block uh, baby's uh, latching okay so you tell them that there is no need to buy those lactation bras or lactation uh, gown which are not uh, giving her appropriate enough space uh, for baby to latch on okay so you want to kind of uh, you know ask her not to spend so much money you know okay uh, then uh, seventh point is your uh, now she is ready to breastfeed okay she has uh, washed her hands she has taken uh, some water she has taken the position where the baby is okay she has opened her breast completely uh, now she is basically going to take that baby okay so many times what happens and baby may show some hunger cues and then again fall back asleep you know especially in first uh, two three weeks or so so you want to make sure that you basically kind of wake up the baby uh, completely and then put the baby on the breast okay so the way you wake up the baby is basically you want uh, mother should remove blanket or the bed sheet covering the baby okay so you just remove whatever extra blanket because I've seen uh, again and again that mothers always have so many blankets and they take that blank blanket with the baby and try to latch the baby this will cause a lot of hindrance in latching so you tell her uh, nothing to worry about she can just put one pair of cloth 
uh, on the baby remove uh, you know uh, cap remove socks uh, make baby kind of you know a little bit uncomfortable okay and that's the best way to wake up the baby if baby even for us if we are kind of wrapped in so many blanket and we are very comfortable it will be very difficult for us to wake up right so similarly for babies also i don't recommend uh, putting on uh, too many clothes while nursing the baby uh, especially you know that they would be skin to skin contact because in cross cradle hold there is a uh, you know amazing kind of uh, skin to skin contact you know because babies put very close to mother's skin so even if you don't have you know say one pair of it should be okay if it is very cold then obviously you want to have one pair but remember that uh, even in cold weather so, you know this cross cradle hold kind of uh, you know improves the skin to skin contact because baby is extremely close to mother and that's why i recommend that baby should mother should buy clothes in which her uh, both the breast uh, are exposed you know and uh, she should be able to bring the baby uh, in skin to skin contact okay so here i'll go through this point number 7 to breastfeed the mother should remove the blanket or the bed sheet covering the baby she should also remove baby's caps mittens and socks as well in winter she can dress the baby in warm clothes to breastfeed uh, she must not dress the baby in a very thick cloth because that cloth can become a barrier between mother and the baby while breastfeeding okay and latching always get affected if baby has too many blanket covering you know mother sisters just don't understand where to hold the baby okay uh, once the baby is deeply attached to the mother's breast uh, then she can uh, cover its body with the cloth so if once the uh, baby is uh, very well attached and mother uh, kind of check the latch then you know she can put the blanket on the top you know so that way it will cover her as well as the baby but while attach attaching the baby uh, i don't recommend any any of those another thing i don't recommend is pillows many mothers have this habit of buying you know those boppy pillows or those uh, you know those uh, uh, pillows so i recommend that uh, she, while she's attaching the baby do not use any of those pillows because when you have those pillows uh, you know the control that mother needs to have to attach the baby uh, it kind of uh, goes down you know that control is not there when the baby is uh, sleeping on the on the um, boppy pillow okay so please avoid any of those pillows while attaching the baby once the baby is attached then you can uh, for mother's comfort you can do whatever that mother feels comfortable but while in the process of latching the baby i i want mother to hold the baby you know uh, in her hand and basically maneuver or control uh, the whole basically body uh, baby's neck baby's body everything should be controlled by mother's hand and not by boppy pillow okay so that's what i wanted to make sure there is another way to wake up the baby which is very very powerful is to put the baby in a sitting position so what i do is once they you know, once you remove a lot of clothes you know and once baby is wearing only one pair of uh, on see then i tell mother to put the baby in a sitting position like this you know and uh, she can bring the baby a little bit forward okay and uh, here this is a very good way of waking up the baby i mean if you put this baby in this position literally within a couple of minutes you will see that baby will open the eyes and will start looking for the breast okay so this is another very powerful way of waking up the baby and i use this technique even when baby goes to sleep on the breast or even when we need to uh, burp the baby you know uh, the sitting position and make sure that you bring the uh, kind of trunk little bit forward this way as you can try yourself when you when you bring your trunk forward uh, you will see that the the stomach is getting compressed and once the stomach get compressed you now they wake up okay so you can try this in the field okay now the uh, point 8 is uh, how to hold the baby so here now you have uh, woke up uh, woke up the baby okay here is the, you have woken up the baby now okay and now what you're going to do you're going to basically bring the baby suppose i'm going to breastfeed on one side okay so with the other hand okay and this is cross cradle hold so that you know that you know uh, you hold the baby from the opposite hand from from the breast that you're going to breastfeed and then you put the fingers behind the ears okay and then basically you know uh, put baby's leg on other side so here let's see what uh, what this says that mother should hold the baby's head with the hand uh, on the other side of the breast 
So here is, uh, you know, uh, other side of the breast from which she wants to breastfeed. Okay, so here this is where, this is the graphic. So here mother is breastfeeding from the right side and then mother is holding the baby from the left hand. Okay, so this is what, uh, this is called cross cradle. Okay, if she wants to feed from the right breast, she should hold the baby's head with the left hand. She should support the baby's body. Okay, so this is the right breast, this is the left breast. She is holding the baby from left hand. Okay, uh, here now she has, uh, we have shown that how mother has kind of held the uh, baby and has given the full body support. So here again I'm going to show, uh, this is the right side that I'm going to breastfeed or demonstrate breastfeeding. So here with, uh, this is my right side. So here I'm going to hold the baby uh, with my left hand, okay, and support uh, the hand, okay, uh, support the full body, okay, and then basically uh, this is how it's going to be, okay. So we'll go more in detail. Uh, just make sure that how I'm sitting, I'm sitting with my back straight, okay. Uh, of course, uh, in uh, you know, in mother, you want to give some back support also. So if there is a pillow behind, you can put the pillow, okay. But uh, this is called cross cradle because I'm holding the baby from the opposite hand from where I'm going to breastfeed, okay. Then you have, uh, she should hold the baby's legs properly under the armpit of the same hand with which she is holding the baby's head so that it, its uh, body doesn't slide downward. If possible, she should try to place the baby's hip joint in her elbow. So this is really, really important. Uh, the reason being that many times, you know, if we don't support the hip, okay, then baby tend to slip down. And if baby tend to slip down, what will happen? The latch will come out. Okay, so what I've mentioned over here is that you basically put the legs very deep into the armpit, just like how we hold the clutch purse, you know, and then you ask mother to bring baby's hip a little bit outward. Okay, so here in this position, what is happening, the hip is sitting on the elbow joint. Okay, uh, so this here in this position, again, baby is sitting, it, baby is in a sitting position. Okay, so this is what I'm doing is making baby sit on my elbow. Baby has a good uh, full body support. Okay, and it'd be easy for baby if baby sitting and resting on mother's uh, elbow joint. Okay, uh, <clears throat> then tenth point is now mother must hold the baby in a correct position and bring it to her breast. She should not bend down. She should bring the baby up to her breast. So here, this is what I mentioned that, uh, you know, she needs to bring the baby up. She should not be bending down. So it should not be like this. She should be bringing the baby up, okay? Okay, now, uh, correct way of holding the head. Because this again, I see a lot of issues uh, in the field, especially, you know, when you're helping the mother, mother has a tendency of holding the head like this. Okay, the uh, and this is this is really not good because again, when when somebody pushes the head, uh, you know, from here from the back of the head, they tend to kind of press it on the head. And when you press the hand uh, on baby's head, uh, you tend to flex it. And when you flex the neck, it'll be easy. It'll be very difficult for baby to swallow. Okay, so uh, this this is an important aspect of 45 point is how you hold the head. Now remember that we have a bone just behind our ears. It's called mastoid bone. So if the if you can hold on to a mastoid bone uh, and you know keep your fingers on that bone rather than on the head, you'll be able to basically uh, you know flex or extend the neck. Okay, so that is important. Twelfth uh, point is uh, so here. This is this is how you kind of hold a baby's, uh, you know, head, not like this, not like this, but, you know, both, uh, both fingers should be on the mastoid bone, okay? And then basically the wrist of the mother uh, sh should be uh, holding the baby's head. It should rest between baby's shoulder blade. The mother must support baby's entire body with the hand with uh, which she is holding the baby. So here, like when I'm holding mother baby's head, what I'm doing is uh, with my uh, palm, I'm supporting baby's back. Okay, so this is this is important that uh, you know I'm supporting baby's back with the with the help of my uh, palm. Okay. Uh, 
what should be the position of the baby's body for breastfeeding so here these are most important points which w has mentioned so i would like to mention over here also that baby's ear shoulder and hip should be in a straight line so here you can see that uh, basically uh, when we are sitting or when we are eating we always have our body st in straight line we will never be able to eat like this you know so similarly when baby is feeding uh, baby's uh, head you know, uh, you know uh, in a sense a baby's uh, ears shoulder joint and the hip joint should be in a straight line okay if baby's neck is twisted like this what will happen basically the ears will come in front uh, one ear will come in front and one ear will uh, kind of will be back okay and it will not basically align with the shoulder joint or the hip joint so you want to make sure that whenever you bring the baby to breastfeed uh, baby should have a you know absolutely straight line position okay so here in this position when I'm bringing the baby to in a cross cradle hold you know uh, baby should be like this and not uh, up looking like that or not down looking like that okay it should be absolutely straight so it should be like exactly the baby should be facing the breast and not mother's face because if mo baby is facing mother's uh, face it would be like this okay so please this is really really important because many times what happens that the way mother bring the baby is you know uh, the, the whole body may be straight but the neck is twisted because what she's doing is she's bringing the uh, she's trying to put baby's face so that baby is looking at mother's face this is not needed okay you tell her that basically the face should be facing the breast you know just like how we eat we eat when we eat we eat uh, we see it in our uh, plate we don't look up right uh, we, our our focus is on the food that we are eating so exactly same way uh, baby's uh, face should be focusing on the uh, breast of the mother not at mother's face okay this way we'll turn baby's neck like this okay all right uh, another thing is so that is very important point that uh, baby should be in a straight line uh, one more important point i want to uh, reiterate that baby should be in an absolute horizontal position okay many time i see that mothers they tend to bring the baby in a in a diagonal position in a diagonal position what is happening you're not supporting the whole body okay so i do not uh, recommend diagonal position you tell the mother that you put the baby in an absolutely horizontal position such that baby's hip are uh, supporting are getting supported by the elbow joint okay so this is your uh, perfect position of a uh, straight line you know uh, kind of ears are in line with the uh, shoulder joint as well as a hip joint okay and uh, uh, completely uh, completely straight line okay uh, the 14th point that I want to show over here is the baby's stomach should gently press against mother's chest. So here when you bring the baby in a cross cradle hold, uh, you want to make sure that the baby's chest is rotated towards mother. Okay, Because many times what we see in a, in a, a cr uh, cradle hold is uh, you know baby's brought like this but what is happening is the chest is facing upward okay and uh, baby's uh, kind of hands are uh, rotated okay so you want to make sure that uh, basically you bring the chest uh, mother's chest and baby's chest close to each other okay so they should be in contact with each other so uh, this way baby will also get skin to skin touch with the mother as well as baby will be close enough to have a good deep attachment uh, to the baby okay okay now the fourth point uh, which is very important uh, which is basically the baby's nostril should be in line with uh, mother's nipple so at this point uh, actually uh, you know we have we really focus a lot uh, that the nostril of the baby should be in front of the nipple why not tip uh, the reason we don't want a tip to be in front of the nipple because if you have a tip in front of the nipple what will happen there won't be any extension of the neck okay now here what we what we're trying to do is uh, it's just like the example of drinking water so when we drink water we always kind of uh, tilt our neck backward a little bit and then uh, swallow water similarly uh, you want to bring the baby in a, a, a neck extension position because when you're extending your neck what is happening uh, your uh, your lips and chin are going in a deeper uh, you know at a lower uh, area you know because you want a lower latch at the same time baby's neck is extended so when baby's neck is extended what is happening uh, the nair is in a direct uh, line with the nipple 
okay and that is very very important that you want to have a uh, you know uh, extension of neck and this is the best way to kind of uh, you know uh, bring the baby to uh, breast is to extension of neck neck you know the nose will not get uh, embedded no nose will be out from the breast nose will not be touching the breast okay so that is important okay then is uh, just like how adult extend the neck backward while drinking water the mother must extend baby's neck backward by tilting his face upward and bringing his chin close to the breast this movement will bring the baby's neck to mother's nipple so here again i'm going to teach you like how what how we want to bring baby's uh, you know neck to the nipple so here uh, again I'll, i'll show it over here so here suppose baby is coming okay say say for example this is the cross cradle hold okay and here what you want to do you want to bring the baby so that the neck is in front of the nipple neck okay so here you can see how baby's neck is getting extended okay and the uh, lips are more towards the lower ella where lower lips are okay and uh, it's just the neck which is getting uh, in line with the nipple okay now if you bring baby straight on like this nipple nipple to nose to nipple so in this position what happens the nose is getting compressed so here you know when baby opens the mouth what will happen both the upper and the lower ella will go in the mouth at the same time the nose will get compressed okay and there won't be any extension of neck so a little bit of extension will help to swallow the milk okay and suppose if baby is too far uh, kind of uh, you know uh, f- uh, on the top of the nipple so if baby is like too far okay like this then what will happen baby will have to bend the neck forward okay and then only upper ella will go in the mouth so you in those situation nose will get compressed then upper ella will be in the mouth and neck will be flexed so there are three things happening if baby is brought too lateral to the to the nipple okay so here in this position what i would do i would pull baby's leg down okay towards towards the leg and then again extend the neck and then bring the baby so that the mouth is more towards the lower ella and the neck is extended okay so this is the position uh extremely important because uh, this is a docking position so if you can dock the baby well uh, baby will be able to kind of grasp the areola pretty well no areola latch uh, remember it's not full areola because every healthcare worker that i come in contact with they say pura areola jana chahiye pura areola it's not full areola it's only low areola latch okay all right then you have holding the breast so when you holding the breast uh now remember one thing that uh many of these mothers have big breast okay big areola and baby's mouths are small they are not so big like us right so we have to basically help mother to understand how to hold the breast so she can contour it properly and it becomes easy for uh, mother to breastfeed the baby or just latch deep attachment okay so here i want to uh, show that how mother should hold the breast now again i want to teach you the concept because uh, this concept will help you not only in cross cradle hold but it will help you in all the other holds that you may want to try okay like for example if, uh, you know football hold or sideline hold or any of those hold so here the the concept is that basically whenever we eat you know our fingers are always parallel to lips right so if you are eating a say big uh, burger or anything big our fingers are parallel to lips so here when you press those uh, you know uh, your burger what you're doing is basically your 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 limb, uh, fingers are parallel to your lips okay and then you extend and then you put that burger on the lower lip and then you can take a, you take a bite similarly uh, now here baby is coming in a cross cradle hold and here what is happening there is a big kind of a similar big size uh, areola or breast you know sitting in front of the uh, uh, baby so in this position in this cross cradle hold what is happening that baby's lips are vertical okay so like for example in this position uh, if you look at it you know in a cross cradle position baby's lips are completely vertical right so you will be holding the breast in a uh, in, in a vertical position so your fingers would be parallel to baby's lips and you will be holding either from the top or you'll be holding from the bottom okay so that is important that uh, you know another thing what is happening in this position uh, you know uh, baby's upper lip is at a, a kind of 9 o'clock position and the lower lip is at 3 o'clock position on my right breast okay so that is so you want to keep those fingers right where the lips are 
So the, the one finger would be coming at 9 o'clock and one finger would be coming at 3 o'clock position. Okay, so here again we'll go back, but I just wanted to teach you the concept that whichever may be the position, like for example, here in this, uh, you know, your uh, football hole, your upper lip over here is coming at 12 o'clock position. Uh, you know, just imagine that uh, your breast is a clock, okay? So here in uh, this one, upper lip is coming at 12 and the lower lip is coming at 6. So your fingers will be parallel to lips. So one finger would be at uh, 12 o'clock position and a uh, other finger would be at a 6 o'clock position. And another thing what, uh, what is happening is uh, your baby's lips in this position, your baby's lips, the first, the upper one is coming at 3 o'clock and the lower one is coming at 9. So you will be putting your fingers right parallel to baby's lips. Okay. So remember the concept. You put your fingers where baby's lips are. Okay. Don't, don't worry about you, see, all that because you will forget in your field. Where the lips are, you put your fingers. Okay. So that's the concept. It's exactly where our lips are. We put our fingers to uh, kind of make the food, you know, smaller uh, or the, say, any burger smaller so that we can take a big bite. Okay, so that's the concept. So here let's see what happens at cross cradle hole. The mother should hold the breast in a U-shaped hole from the bottom with the hand on the same side of the breast from which she wants to feed the baby. So here in this basically, this is the right side that I'm feeding. Here I basically first work on the position of the baby. Make sure the hips are out, you know, uh, baby's uh, kind of uh, nares are across uh, or nostrils are across nipple. Here baby's now ready to feed. Okay, so now I'm going to hold the breast. So uh, the way I'm going to hold the breast is I'm going to put my fingers at, uh, you know, nine o'clock position and at the three o'clock position. Okay, and hold it uh, in a U shape. Okay, uh, so that uh, it becomes easy to contour the breast and then it becomes easy for baby to uh, latch. Okay. So here again, going back again, imagine that there is a clock on mother's breast. The mother's nipple is in the center of this clock. If the baby will be breastfeeding from the right breast, then the tip of the thumb of mother's right hand should be at a 9 o'clock position and the tip of the other fingers uh, of the right hand should be at the 3 o'clock position. Okay, so exactly same what I explained right now. So here is the right breast. So the thumb would be at a, at a 9 o'clock position and other fingers would be at 3 o'clock position. Okay, so this is how uh, I have explained. Okay, so right hand would be this way and the left hand would be in a different, uh, you know, different, you know. So your thumb would be at uh, a 3 o'clock position and the fingers would be the 9 o'clock position, just opposite. Okay, uh, one more thing which I have mentioned over here, the dip of U shape should fall at 6 o'clock position on this clock. So dip of, uh, so your dip of your U, this one, should be at 6 o'clock position. Okay, so this is important. This is how the mother should hold the breast in U shape hold from the bottom. Okay, so that's important. The mother's thumb and her fingers must be placed in an equal distance from the nipple. Okay, so uh, this is also very important because many times what happens is that mother put one finger on the very close and another one very far. So here if she does, then the whole areola will kind of turn. You don't want the areola and the nipple to turn in one particular direction. You want to have an equal distance, uh, you know, from, from the nipple. Both fingers should be at the equal distance. Okay. Uh, there should be distance of three fingers between mother's nipple and her thumb and between her nipple and her other fingers. So what happens many times, no? Uh, mothers, they tend to just hold the uh, uh, nipple and then they, they try to put it in baby's mouth, okay? This is too close. It will, there will be only nipple feeding. Or sometimes mothers put their fingers too far. If it's too far also, the breast will not contour, okay? So you want to put it in the right position. And what uh, what we have experienced in the field, that if mothers were putting three fingers over here, three fingers over here, uh, that's when basically the contouring was perfect, you know, and that was not blocking uh, baby's attachment uh, to low areola, okay? So three fingers over here, so here one finger, and three fingers over here, so another one over here. So this is how you should hold the breast, okay? At this point, it is important to keep holding baby's body in a complete horizontal plane so that baby's upper lip is at 9 o'clock uh, and its lower lip is at 3 o'clock position. Because your fingers are at 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock position, you want to make sure that baby's lips are also at that position, okay? And that would be possible only if baby is in a complete horizontal position. If baby is in a diagonal position like this, then you can see the lips are coming up. 
at around 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock, okay. If baby is very vertical, then you will see that upper lip is coming at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So that's why this is important that you make sure that baby is in completely horizontal position, that your lips are totally vertical, okay. Uh, in this position, the mother's thumb will be in front of baby's upper lip and her fingers will be behind the uh, baby's lower lip. Okay, and mother's fingers on the breast should be placed parallel to baby's lips. So this is that's why we are saying that in cross cradle hold, you want to hold the breast in a U shape. Okay, with with fingers parallel to baby's lips. Okay, all right. Uh, here I've shown the example also, so you can show this graphic to mother, like how she holds when she's eating something big. You know, her fingers are parallel to her own lips, right? Similarly, when she holds the breast, she wants to make sure that she keeps her fingers parallel to baby's lips, so it becomes easy for a baby to have a big deep attachment. Okay. Now uh, let's see number twenty-two point. So the black area around the nipple is called areola. So when you're talking about areola, areola, you know, you need to tell mother what areola is. When the baby opens his mouth widely, uh, the mother must bring the baby to the breast and compress her breast. This will make sure that the lower part of the areola, where the baby's lower lip is placed, will easily go into baby's mouth. Okay. Holding the breast correctly and compressing it at the right time in the right way will ensure that the baby attaches deeply to the lower part of areola. So this part is one of the most important uh, skill. Okay, so if mother can understand the skill well and try to teach her the skill during ANC time. Okay, so that she already knows. Uh, you know, you have a breast model, you have doll. You know, so teach her this uh, during ANC time before she delivers because then becomes too difficult. You know, once the baby is there, there are hundred thousand advices which will come from everybody you know so if she knows this then she will she will know she will know exactly what to do okay and in any hold this will be helpful okay okay uh, it is important the breast is evenly compressed by mother's thumb and the finger the mother should not hold only the nipple but uh, and put it in the baby's mouth so of course there is no holding of just uh, uh, you know not in a v-shape so your your breast should not be held in a v-shape it, sh it should not be v-shape it should be u-shape okay and uh, here i've also mentioned uh, it, the point will come that the breast should be uh, held only by the tip of the finger okay not the full finger because if you have a full finger attached then what will happen it will come in the way for uh, in the way of baby's latching so you basically uh, if you remember you know how you hold a dirty hand or dirty uh, dirty clothes right you hold it always like this with the tip of the finger right so you want to hold the breast also with the tip of the finger what i teach mother is like I tell her that you know uh, most of these mothers they know how crab looks like right crab or cl claws of crabs so the, the, those uh, crab claws are like this so I said you hold your breast in a claw shape you know like in a as if she's holding uh, that the crab is holding the breast okay so it will be only with the tip of the finger okay so this how this is how it should be Okay, the mother should not compress her breast in V-shape hole. The baby will only attach to nipple in this hole and will get very little milk. Okay, uh, so here now we are ready. Uh, one more thing you want to make sure that the U, U of that, uh, so the dip of the U will be coming at 6 o'clock position. So if, you're, if your hands are too sideways like this, you know that U will not fall at 6 o'clock position. Okay, the dip the dip of the U, okay? So you make sure that you tell the mother to bring her uh, shoulder closer to the trunk and then put that uh, U, uh, you know, the dip of the U at a six o'clock position and only holding with the help of tip and not the full finger, okay? I will come back in the second session and I will complete this uh, chart uh, where we have discussed 45 points, okay? So uh, here I'll take your permission and uh, thank you so much.